ladies and gentlemen, for a session sponsored by Tiny Clues. Please welcome Group Head of CRM and Customer and Market Insight at Thomas Cook, Christian Lang, and VP of Product Marketing Tiny Clues, Francois Laxalt, in discussion with Skift X Research Editor, Jeremy Cressman. Francois, Christian, welcome. Good to have you guys up here. Um, welcome to this afternoon's session on AI and personalization presented by our partners at Tiny Clues. Um, so today we're going to talk about the convergence of what many of you would agree are two really important trends in the travel industry. One is the growing application of artificial intelligence, and then the other is personalization and how we market to customers. And I think a lot of us in the industry talk about this desire to provide more personalization, right? You know, after all, if we deliver more relevant products, services, or offers to customers, they're much more likely to get, we're much more likely to get their attention, right? Um, make more sales, keep them coming back. But I think a lot of people actually struggle to execute on this idea of personalization, right? It can be kind of a vague catch-all term with a lot of different meanings. Um, so today we're going to talk about how the technology of artificial intelligence is actually helping marketers in the travel industry to deliver more relevant and precise personalization. So. Uh, Francois, I would love to start with you. If you can tell me, you know, personalization, it's become this very important, you know, popular topic in the travel industry. Tell me what that means to you and also on behalf of Tiny Clues, how you guys think about it. Well, um, I feel that most travel companies right now, they're very successful at delivering uh, personalized experiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, during booking, checking, setting, and series. But as a consumer, as a traveler, I really feel that the messages I do receive are not relevant. They are personalized, but not relevant. And uh, let me take an example, not from the, the travel uh, industry, because I want sure. to keep my friends uh, in, in, in the room. So let's <laughs> take an example from retail. I bought recently, I mean, two, two weeks ago, I bought barbecue for my home on Amazon, right? And so guess what? Last week, I received an email from Amazon saying, hi, Francois, I mean, we have this great barbecue for you. Do you want to buy it? I bet Come on, guys, I just bought the barbecue. You're not buying two barbecues in two weeks, right? But my point is that this email is fully personalized with my first name, last name, talking about the products I like. So for me, there is a big difference between personalization and relevancy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, at Tiny Clues, this is, this is what we are trying to achieve, bridge that gap between the two, um, because we're working with a lot of kind of big brands, uh, I mean, Thomas Cook, but 2E, Club Med, Accor, Air France, and some others, and we are, sorry, um, oh, clients, and, and with the solution, uh, with AI, thanks to the AI, they can find the people highly interested in the different offers based on the destination or booking window. And when you do that, um, you have relevant messages. And if you have relevant messages, what do you have? You have happier customers, better customer experience, and we're more revenue. Mm. Uh, on average, across our clients, it's plus 79% campaign revenue. Mm. So I'm really curious also about this idea of artificial intelligence and how it's applicable here to this concept of personalization, right? Um, how is it making personalization better or easier? Help me understand that a little bit. It's, it's, it's super difficult to achieve relevancy at scale or personalization at scale. I mean, when you have thousands of offers, hundreds of thousands of customers or millions of customers, billions of data points about those customers and those offers, how can you just use that together, mix, mix that together to find who is going to be highly interested by an offer? I mean, it's, it's, it's super complicated. Uh, if you just take an example, I don't know, if you want to promote, uh, you want to sell more um, hotel bookings in India, mm -hmm. right? Um, what would be your target? I mean, you would probably pick uh, people who already went to India in the last two years, mm -hmm. everybody does, does that. Uh, people who searched uh, India on your website or a few couple of uh, pages about India on your website. Mm -hmm. This target is too narrow. And you're missing two things. The first one is that most of the people who went to India in the last 24 months, they won't come back. It's a beautiful country, I love it, but they won't come back in 24 months. Right. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of people who went to Costa Rica or Greenland they want to go to India, but you don't know. This is where AI enters the game. Mm -hmm. And so with Tiny Clues, we're using um, 
hardcore deep, uh, deep learning uh, tech. Uh, but forget about that because the product is super simple. But anyway, we find the tiny clues in, in, in your first party data so that we can find who is going to travel where and when. So it's about the destination and the booking window. And when you, when you do that, you increase customer experience and you increase revenue. Mm. So it's kind of like finding the hidden patterns and doing that at scale. At scale, this is, this is what's really important. We, we describe our product as AI first, yeah. just like you all have a mobile first apps for sure and, and design, but we, yeah. we have an AI first design product. Mm. Okay. So Christian, what challenges does Thomas Cook face with personalization? I know you guys are using tiny clues and also, how is your use of tiny clues in AI helping to address those challenges? What are you seeing? Okay, so uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have is that we do not have 200 data scientists. Um, data scientists is a really uh, rare product. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, so um, we have business analysts, uh, people that do marketing communication, um, but we do not have enough data scientists that are able to do the best data selections. Mm -hmm. um, and the second challenge that we have is we are working, I think, with all bigger CRM tools that are existing in the world. Um, you mentioned so, you have quite a few of them. Yeah, it's uh, independently if uh, Salesforce, Microsoft, whatever, yeah, with all of them. And uh, when we want to use tools, they need to be able to connect to all of these tools. Um, because if we decide for one, then in the other market, we should work with the same. Yeah. in the best case. Um, so this is the, the big challenge that we have. And uh, we are using Tiny Clues now, I think, for two and a half years in the UK. Yeah. Um, of course, it helped us in increasing uh, efficiency, revenue, uh, these kind of things. But we have a slide for this, actually, yeah, if I we think. could show that, just some of the stats that yeah. uh, are relevant. So it, what you can see, it's independently if email revenue, website, or Facebook, it's really going up. So it's increasing our efficiency. Mm -hmm. They helped us in finding the right people for our campaigns. Yeah. Um, but what is maybe even more important for us is the easiness. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's, on the one hand, easy to connect to all of the tools that we have mm -hmm. um, via an SFTP server. Easy. It's right. there. And on the second hand, um, it's easy to use. So yeah. a selection within Tiny Clues takes not longer than one minute, yeah. um, and everybody could do that. Yeah. So I don't need to find new people that are able to work with a Tiny Clue tool. I right. can use my existing people. I don't need data scientists. Um, I just need to train my people. Yeah, I mean, it, it just in talking to other people in the travel industry, data, data scientists are a very valuable commodity, Absolutely. and you want to be using them for the right. Especially when they're able to use artificial intelligence. Yeah? Right, so. so this is a sort of way to scale that ability to analyze the data in a new way. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really interested in this idea of AI being able to optimize things, right? You know, it finds a pattern or it finds some particular clue in data and then it just centers in on that. And, you know, we were talking backstage about this idea of, you know, watching a bunch of science fiction movies on Netflix and then all I get are just Netflix movies about science fiction, right? How, do we run a risk of going too far with artificial intelligence? Like, how do you avoid that? It's a question for me, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Um, well, actually, it really depends on, on your, uh, what you define as AI and, and the, um, uh, the technology you're using. So you have different types of technologies. If you use uh, collaborative filtering, uh, for example, um, or lookalikes, you tend at the end to always recommend the same products to the same mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Um, then you have all the technologies just like deep learning. Deep learning is very new uh, applied to uh, database marketing. Mm -hmm. It's very new, it's kind of unique. And so deep learning is able to find kind of the destinations, if we talk about travel, that you've never been there before, but you might buy this product. So it, the different technologies, are, are they do have pros and cons, mm -hmm. but deep learning helps with this challenge of not always recommending the same, the same um, destinations. Right, okay. And, mm -hmm. and actually, Around about one third of people, we have done a huge segmentation in different markets, it's around about everywhere the same. One third of people are actively going on holiday where they have never been before. Mm -hmm. So when you now do a selection based on their travel experience, it's really difficult. Right. Or the, the second challenge is when we launch a new product, we've just launched for millennials a product called Cook's Club. Um, how could you find the right audience for them? Yeah, it's so, new. You um, don't even know who to And draw. when you then have the Netflix effect that yeah. I'm interested in science fiction, uh, I only get science fiction recommendations anymore. Right. But in travel, it's 
you need, we need to give them new inspiration outside of what they have done so far. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a, a big challenge. Um, and we need to avoid this Amazon effect where I always get what I've already bought. Yeah. Um, let's end on a note, just a broader question. What do you think is next for personalization, artificial intelligence? Where will this technology evolve next? Do you want to go first? OK. So um, I personally think today we still start with the product uh, and try to find the right people for the product. Uh, the next step will be starting with the customer um, and finding a really one-to-one -one, um, experience offer only for this customer to, to really be individual. Mm -hmm. And individual is much more than Mallorca, the right price. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, we have just asked some customers and one answer was, I would like to go on holiday um, for a, a bike trip through Tuscany yeah. in combination with wine tasting. And this is what we need to achieve with artificial yeah. intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that hopefully will be there in uh, two to three years. We're just about out of time, but any final thoughts, Francois? Um, I absolutely do agree with you. I mean, it's about AI will bring automation to campaign management. So AI will be able to find, to match customers with the need with your offers and match that together and automate your campaign plan. And it's going to deliver a way better customer experience mm. and more revenue. Mm. Francois, Christian, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.